Welcome back to Fox and Friends. A new law in several states says everyone convicted of drunk driving, even first-time offenders, will have to install a breathalyzer-type lock in their car that can detect if the driver's been drinking. But is this going overboard, or will it simply save lives? Sarah Longwell is with the American Beverage Institute. Her organization is against interlock laws for first-time offenders. And on the other side of the debate, Nebraska State Senator Tony Fulton. He sponsored the bill in the state and joins us by the phone. So, Sarah, we'll start with you. Uh, the American Beverage Institute is against this law. Why? Well, we're against it for low BAC first-time offenders. And the problem with this mandate is that it eliminates a judge's ability to distinguish between somebody who might be one sip over the legal limit and somebody who's had 10 drinks prior to driving. Now, what we want to see is uh, these interlocks being installed in the cars of high BAC and repeat offenders. Those are the people out there causing the vast majority of fatalities on the highway. Now, let me just give you an example. A 120-pound woman who's had two six-ounce glasses of wine can reach .08 uh, after having just those two glasses of wine. Now, if she drives, she should absolutely be punished, but she shouldn't be punished to the same degree as that person who's had 10 drinks prior to driving. You wouldn't punish somebody driving five miles over the speed limit the same way you would someone driving 40 miles over the speed limit. Proportional response, right. letting the punishment fit the crime, it's at the heart of our judicial philosophy. And okay. these mandates fly in the face of that philosophy. Okay, Senator, she says the punishment uh, does not fit the crime. What's your opinion on this? Well, I disagree, and that actually was something we talked about, and the, the punishments aren't the same. Uh, here in Nebraska, the law we passed for uh, .08 uh, is to employ the ignition interlock for a set period of days, I think it was 120 days. If you get busted at .15, we put the ignition interlock on for longer. So I guess that issue here is whether or not we utilize existing technology to, uh, to fight convicts. These are people who aren't innocent. These are people who have been busted for drunk driving. They put us at risk. And so we're cracking the whip in ways that technology affords us. Sarah, what would you suggest instead? Well, uh, first of all, what we suggest and what we support is putting these in the cars of high BAC and repeat offenders. But let me make one other point. Uh, the fact is, is that there are a lot of activist groups and pro-interlock forces out there lobbying for this technology to become more ubiquitous, which is why they're pushing for these low BAC first offender mandates. But their ultimate goal is not just first offender mandates, it's to put them in, as standard equipment in all cars. They want this technology. I mean, right now, the federal government, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, they're working to develop technology that puts sensors in the steering wheels that read your BAC level, okay. retinal scans in... in um, you know, in the, in the driver's side window. And those types of things are an effort so that this will come as standard equipment in all cars and eliminate people's ability to have a glass of wine with dinner prior to driving, a okay, uh, beer at a ball game. I hate to and, cut you and off. And that's I what we're opposed to, let, to. I want to let so, uh, Senator uh, Fulton get the last word on this. We haven't uh, enough of your opinion. All right. How effective has this measure been in going forward? Do you want it in all cars, like yeah. Sarah suggested? <clears throat> Uh, no, we don't want this in all cars. What we've seen in other states is that the recidivism rate has been cut in half. We saw a 25% reduction in alcohol-related fatalities. Uh, with the first two years, it was enacted in New Mexico. That's I mean, not look, true. That is, is from a study is, that was done by activists, conducted by activists. That is, is, a, that is a bad study, and, and I'm sorry, exposed, but I'm not going to let you use it. We're, this is 2009. We're exposed to new technology every day. So we're utilizing this technology to crack down on bad guys. Now, Sarah is concerned that because there might be some groups out there that want to use this technology on good guys, uh, we shouldn't employ it. Uh, we have good judgment. Okay. If we have a technology, let's go after the, 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 good, the bad guys, I'm not going after good we guys. We do think you should well, employ it on high BAC and repeat offenders. It, it is an interesting debate, uh, and it continues on. We appreciate you both being with us this morning, State Senator Fulton and Sarah Longwell. Uh, this debate will continue. Thank you both.